Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your GIS News for Monday, January 30. Jamaica stands to benefit from over $3 billion U.S. billion in investment projects up to 2019. That's according to the Economic Growth Council EGC member Adam Stewart. Mr. Stewart was providing an investment update during the EGC's quarterly media and stakeholders briefing last Thursday. 15,000 new direct jobs times the seven times multiplier takes us over 100,000 Jamaicans affected temporarily through construction and over the long term. He says the project spans several sectors including mining, tourism, shipping and business process outsourcing, BPO. Existing projects include the $1 billion US dollar investment in the upgrading of the Alpart Alumina refinery, the $750 million US dollar Bogue power plant, upgrading of the Kingston Container Terminal, and construction of the $70 million US dollar Breathless Resort. Mr. Stewart says projects on the verge of implementation include $1.4 billion US dollars worth of investments in tourism across Jamaica, a $150 million US dollar BPO project that will create just over 9,000 new jobs, and $575 million US dollars in alternative energy projects. Future projects include boosting of the BPO sector by over 1,000 new seats, construction of an additional 4,000 hotel rooms by the Charisma Group, Sandals Resort and the Marriott's $50 million US dollar commitment to develop 220 rooms, and Sandals' $100 million US dollar development in Portland. This is only a snapshot. When you take it all and amalgamate it and look at what Jamaica's right now opportunities is quite mind-blowing. We are on the cusp of something fantastic. The Energy Ministry is seeking to avert any threatened disruption in the petroleum trade resulting from a dispute between petroleum marketing company Rubis and the Jamaica Gasoline Retailers Association, JGRA. The dispute relates to the terms of contracts between Rubis and petroleum dealers. The Ministry, along with the Fair Trading Commission and Consumer Affairs Commission, facilitated two meetings on Friday. The first was with representatives of the JGRA and subsequently with the Rubis management. Coming out of those meetings, a statement from the Ministry indicates that some matters raised by the JGRA referred to the need for additional regulations or legislative amendments, some of which are already being pursued. The Energy Ministry urged the representatives to meet and conclude negotiations on those issues that were of a private, commercial and contractual nature. The Ministry also pointed out that should a resolution not be achieved, then the parties could opt to pursue the legal remedies that may be available to them. The National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA, has received two new tipper trucks to help improve garbage collection in the Kingston metropolitan area. The units, which are valued at $21 million, were donated by the government of Japan. They arrived in the island in December last year and were officially handed over to the NSWMA on Friday. Japanese Ambassador to Jamaica, Masanori Nakano, gave his government's commitment to further partnerships, pointing out that an additional truck is to be delivered soon. Both Japan and Jamaica are rightly focused on the need to address the common issue of solid waste reduction for the greater benefit of everyone living in our societies. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Local Government and Community Development, Dental Thorpe, says these units are in addition to the 17 compactor trucks bought by the government. He says the first shipment is expected to arrive in the island in another two weeks. That another three are no have, been, have now been shipped and will also reach during the month of February. And the next shipment of three is proposed to reach in early April. Government is working on a new national qualifications framework that will strengthen technical vocational education and training, TVET. Education State Minister Floyd Green says the ministry is working through Heart Trust NTA and UNESCO to develop a new TVET strategy to equip young people and adults with the skills required for employment and lifelong learning. The central plank to our success, or one of the central planks, is the technical competence and competitiveness of our workforce, which must be in tip-top shape to take advantage of the wide-ranging investment opportunities which are coming our way. Minister Green was addressing a stakeholders meeting at the office of the Prime Minister last week, which involved the Heart Trust NTA and Chairman of the Economic Growth Council, Michael Lee Chin. And finally, in observation of Heart Month in February, the Heart Foundation of Jamaica will be conducting island-wide screenings for risk factors associated with sudden cardiac arrest, SCA. 
SCA is a condition in which the heart suddenly and unexpectedly stops beating, cutting off blood flow to the brain and other vital organs, likely resulting in death if not treated immediately. The Heart Foundation's executive director, Deborah Chen, made the announcement during a recent JIS think tank. We're all at risk for sudden cardiac death, so we need to know our numbers and our status. What is your blood pressure? Do you know what your blood pressure is? Do you know what your cholesterol is? So we might be a walking time bomb and we don't know. Heart Month this year is being observed under the theme, Sudden Cardiac Death. Could it happen to you? Screening sessions will be conducted at the Duhaney Park, Harbour View, Maxfield Park, Lawrence Tavern, Rollington Town and Norman Gardens Health Centres in Kingston and St Andrew. People can also be screened at the Landui, Trinityville, Seaforth and Yalas Health Centres in St Thomas and the Waterford and Old Harbour Health Centres in St Catherine. Other central locations are Regal Plaza in Crossroads, Boulevard Supercenter, Tropical Plaza and Sovereign Centre in St Andrew, as well as the Sajikor Shopping Centre in Spanish Town. But the best thing for, to do is for persons to call the Heart Foundation and let us tell you when we will be in your neighbourhood. But we do have quite a long list of screening dates, not just in February. But every month we have a schedule where we are island-wide. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching.